Welcome to the Experience Better video podcast series. I'm Josh Buechler, and with me today is an OT, Emily Mosman. We're here at the Children's Rehab Center in Grand Island, and uh, today we're going to talk about brachial plexus injuries. So for those uh, who maybe don't know, what, what's the brachial plexus? So typically we're seeing brachial plexus here as a form of the birth injury. Mm -hmm. So when a baby's born, they tend to get stuck into the birth canal. Uh -huh. And when they're exiting, they're usually pulled and it's creating this pull from the spine. So it kind of depends on the um, mechanism of the pull and the injury right. with it, with the cervical nerves and thoracic nerve from that column being pulled, if it's going to be a complete tear from the spine or a full erosion or eruption or just a strain too. Mm -hmm. And it's very unique because it can be very different with on the cervical nerves. You could have one that's a complete involution, one that's a strain. So it's quite a variety. Sure. So it's creating all this sensation and pulling down the arm mm -hmm. and affecting that function of the arms. So right. So the brachial plexus, it's, it's the nerves that go from your spinal cord essentially in your neck and upper thoracic spine and kind of travel down through your armpit essentially down to your arm to kind of give function to your hand so yes. um so and they, and they all kind of merge together in that brachial plexus yes. is that accurate am i saying that correctly yes okay. that's very yeah, accurate very good. so so sometimes it can be kind of uh so that that's why you need an expert like yourself to determine okay which mm -hmm. of these nerves is actually the issue, the culprit, just because it can be kind of hard to differentiate which one um, it actually is. So, yes, exactly. So you're saying a lot of times this, this happens as a result of um, the birth, you know, maybe a complicated birth, you know, the arm gets pulled a little bit or just, you know, positioning, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. and that's a lot of times the reason for this. So, yes, exactly. Okay, so um, so you, you see kids here with brachial plexus injuries. What, what can you do for them? So usually we're getting these children at about two weeks of age where the mm -hmm. shoulder has time to heal and stabilize a little sure. bit more. So it depends after that just on the mechanism of the injury and how mild or severe the pull is. Mm -hmm. So could be um, treating at the beginning for positioning, stretching, and just general healing of that right. upper extremity. But we also have patients here that go to specialty clinics across the United States that mm. work with very specialized surgeons and physicians with this injury where we can really actually point and point more when they do some of their tests for exactly what happened to that nerve during that process so it's easier to pinpoint and create our plan of care for mm -hmm. that patient. So it varies. Some of them may have more intensive surgeries throughout their lives where we sure. might see them quite frequently when they're younger and then interval of spurts when they're a little bit older where we're working on ADL skills. Sure, so you're kind of seeing them for the recovery maybe after those surgeries and, and after some of those different procedures that they may have? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Very good. So what are kind of some of the typical presentations of a patient who's had a brachial plexus injury? What can it range from? So it can be very severe, mm -hmm. where we could have a very flaccid upper extremity to an extremity that has more tone, just mm -hmm. based on what muscles are being innervated by the nerves and sure. which ones are pulled right. first. A lot of times they get their tricep functioning back first and that impedes sure. and kind of changes the progression of that arm and extremity while they're working to obtain and achieve different milestones and range of motion throughout mm -hmm. their arms. Mm -hmm. But there's different techniques and strategies that we can use based on the patient throughout their process and retraining and re-educating these nerves and muscles while they innervate. Mm -hmm. So So what you're saying is you could you could have half your arm, this side of it be flaccid, can't move it, can't use it, and this side be mm -hmm. overactive. So it's it, I mean it's really they're they're not helping each other at all. Yes. So and then that's why that's where you come into play to, to help with that facilitation or inhibiting a little bit on that on that other side as well. Yes, so there can be a variety of complications that arise too, just with how the pull is and all of that too. It can impede the posterior shoulder joint where you have subluxations. Sure. So there's always things during that, especially the early years, to be very mindful of and be able to watch too throughout mm -hmm. and monitor throughout therapy. Mm -hmm. So very very complicated. Uh, injury complicated recovery. What's kind of a, I mean, I'm sure it's a huge range of time frames of when, uh, um, you know, as far as resolution on something like this, but how, what's kind of a normal healing time frame for an injury like that where there's so much nerve involvement? 
Just like you said, it does depend on the patient and the extent of the injury. Mm -hmm. So some of the patients we might see really frequently when they're younger years, like sure. from birth to three, and then yeah. start to reduce some of the frequencies when they have more times in their life that they're developing and growing and might need and mm -hmm. be appropriate for more intense interventions. Mm -hmm. So it's typically is something that they deal with for quite some time into their into their formative years and, and maybe even beyond. So yes. very good. Well, uh, thanks for sharing uh, your knowledge with us today on brachial plexus injuries. What we what uh, what you can do to help them and and uh, um, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Yes, you're right. welcome. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.